we can do for the rest of our lives. There's an iceberg over there. Our, our fingers are automatically just curled. No, my, look at you my fingers. You sit down, your fingers are curled. <laughs> I, I don't feel like they say this is a, wa a rain jacket or waterproof pants because they're not. Waterproof pants are waterproof. It's wet. <laughs> when we were kayaking, they would come up and poke their heads out of the water and make noises at us and you know kind of like stalk us and it was just amazing. I've never been that close to like an animal that's not in captivity before and it was crazy. They would come right right up next to our boats and you know yell at us. It was amazing. And when they got close it was like shocking and like you loved it but then you were also so scared because you didn't know what they wanted to do, you know, if they were just playing around or if they were, you know, get out of, get out of my territory. It's a lifetime kind of thing. Alaska! We <laughs> Snickers! <laughs> we're making a stir fry. It's got some onions and chicken cooking here. Not Nerwin anymore. Spencer's making some, getting some paprika. So this is Master Chef Alaska edition. We're winning. <laughs> So they live along the Pacific Northwest coast and from southern Alaska. Where do we see those? Double, see those? double crested cormorants. Um, <laughs> My talk was interrupted by uh, these whales lunge feeding um, right behind us, probably like 30 feet into the water. And uh, I was just talking about birds, and we heard two whales just coming out of the water. And we, Allison was like, uh, you might have to pause your talk for a minute. And I was, I'm that's totally fine with that. I want to watch the whales too. Uh, it's going to be rough out there. I don't know how much you can see, but we've hit some really rough weather here. Um, and uh, we're trying to get through it. We're just crossing a big stretch of open water and uh, hoping to get there with no mishaps. There you go, the Most of the problem is that the tide's continuing to come in, so the waves and the swells are getting bigger, and then there's gusts of wind coming, so we're starting to get breaking waves. So we just had to come in. It's not an ideal beach, but we all made it. There's a cup, we're about to miss the cup. Awesome paddle, everybody did great. I know you worked hard, that was a good paddle. I was a little scared. And this kid right here like took us through, led me, motivated me, and there is nothing like I I can't I don't appreciate anything more. And the sun is coming out right now. It's like this is this is so surreal. Look at this! Oh my gosh, this is like a movie, you guys! What is this? Where are we? We set up camp um, and just uh, look what we just found right by camp. So there's our camp we just set up and then right after we set it up we found this fresh bear poop. So once we've discovered the, uh, the bear poop we'll start scanning for bears. No. We need to go all the way up to here to see the glacier. Lengthwise, what that means from here all the way up to here is about six, 17, 16, 17 miles, which is a little bit more than we did the first day. We'll be really dead by the end of it, but I think we should. <laughs> and we'll get to see more of it. <coughs> right. So, so we're doing the night battle. We're doing the night battle. We're going to sleep on the plane. Mm -hmm. Is everyone okay? We're doing the night battle. Night battle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> This ice is really dense. It's not like normal ice, even from your freezer that you see when it gets snowy. This is super dense, compact ice. So basically what that means is we need to give ourselves a berth between our boats and the iceberg. There's only a, a very small number of people who actually come in here and kayak. And it's only during, usually during the three months of the summer, so you are part of a very elite group of people who's experienced Glacier Bay so intimately. And I